Hi y'all and welcome to Professor True Love's Concepts for Nurses series and I am Professor Terry True Love. In this episode, part of the orthopedic series, we will look at rheumatoid arthritis or RA and a couple of other CTD, that is connective tissue disorders. Sources for this episode include E's Medical Surgical Nursing, 9th edition, and Soul's Introduction to Critical Care Nursing, 7th edition. Unlike OA, which is usually caused by gravity and wear and tear, RA, or rheumatoid arthritis, is a common connective tissue disease which destroys the joints. It is pro chronic, progressive, systemic inflammatory autoimmune disease that affects primarily the synovial joints. Transformed anti autoantibodies, that is, rheumatoid factors, form and attack the healthy tissue. This causes inflammation. Collaborative management for RA includes assessing to differentiate it between other CTDs, including OA. Early physical assessments in clinical manifestations include joint stiffness, swelling, pain, fatigue, and generalized weakness. Late physical assessments in clinical manifestations include that the joints become progressively inflamed and quite painful. Further, RA can cause the complications of weight loss, fever, extreme fatigue. Because of its chronic nature, RA has exacerbations and remissions. There can be subcutaneous nodules, Respiratory and cardiac complications are sometimes present, as is vasculitis, and there may be the presence of periungual lesions and even paresthesias. In addition, RA is associated with such syndrome as Sjogren's syndrome, which is manifested by dry eyes and dry mouth, Felty's syndrome, in which the RA sufferer has enlargement of the spleen and too few neutrophils in the blood, and Kaplan's syndrome, a type of pneumoconiosis in which interpulmonary nodules appear on chest x-rays. Your assessment should include a psychosocial check because your patient who is in chronic pain and losing their health may be suffering from depression or anxiety. Laboratory assessments should include checking rheumatoid factor, anti-nuclear antibody titer, ESR, serum complement, that is C3 and C4, serum protein electrophoresis, and serum immunoglobins. Remember that thrombocytosis can occur with late RA. And other diagnostic tools can include x-rays, CTs, arthrocentesis, and bone scans. Drug therapy for RA includes disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, or DMARDs. These are actually the mainstay for RA drug therapy, and it is a slow-acting drug that can last up to four to six weeks to control joint inflammation. You should observe for the desired therapeutic drug effects, such as decrease in joint discomfort and swelling. Monitor the patient for potential adverse effects, such as decreasing WBCs and platelets, or elevation in liver enzymes and serum creatinine. NSAIDs are sometimes used for RA to help promote comfort and decrease inflammation. And of course, because they're NSAIDs, the NSAID of choice depends on the patient. It was once thought that Siloxibib or Celebrex should be used rather than older NSAIDs. However, these COX-2 inhibiting drugs have been associated with cardiovascular disease, such as MI and are been taken off the market. Biological response modifiers, or BRMs, are a new class of disease-modifying drugs that help reduce the signals for the immune system to cause the inflammation. The other medications listed also work to reduce the immune response. They include glucocorticosteroids, other immunosuppressive agents, and yet another immunosuppressive agent known as E788, which at this time continues to await approval by the FDA. Non-pharmacological interventions for RA include getting adequate rest, proper positioning, ice and heat application, rarely plasmapheresis, 
complementary and alternative therapy, including anxiety reducing techniques, the promotion of self management, including the management of fatigue and enhancing the patient's body image. We list gout here because gout is also called gouty arthritis. This is caused by urate crystals which deposit in the joints in other body tissues, which causes inflammation. There is primary gout, the most common type of gout, and this is caused by an error in metabolism of the protein purine. Then there is secondary gout, which is caused by hyperuricemia, and that hyperuricemia is caused by another problem in the body. Gout occurs in phases, asymptomatic in which there is no pain but the uric acid is elevated, the acute phase in which there is excruciating pain in inflammation of one or more small joints, especially of the great toe. There is the intermittent phase in which there are intermittent periods of symptoms between the acute attacks and there is chronic phases and that this results in the deposits of urate crystals under the skin and the major organs. Interventions include drug therapy. This includes NSAIDs and colchicine for acute gout and for repeated acute episodes of chronic gout the drugs of choice are allopurinol or Fabuxostat. The patient should be taught with both of these drugs to drink at least eight glasses of water. Nutrition therapy is to limit proteins, to avoid trigger foods, to drink plenty of fluids, to have the pH increase with the ingestion of alkaline foods, and a low purine diet. Another type of arthritis is psoriatic arthritis. It is a skin condition characterized by scaly, itchy rash of the elbows, knees, and scalp. The joints are stiff, especially in the morning. The treatment focus for psoriatic arthritis is managing pain in treating the psoriasis. That does conclude this episode. However, no worries. There are more episodes available. In the meantime, I hope you learned a little bit today. I hope you come back to listen to some more. And if you do, we'll see you then. Take care.